So, the world-famous Dynamite Report. Hey, I thought this show was great. I opened up with Christian and Dustin for the TNT title. These men are incredible workers. This match was great. The wrestling was good. And it's another one. Did anyone actually think Dustin was going to win the TNT title? Well, if they didn't, you could have fooled me. Because, man, they were going nuts for these near falls here at the end of this match. Nick Wayne got involved. He tried the Wayne's World off the uh, off the deal. The ropes got caught on the outside, hit with a destroyer on the cement. And then uh, Christian spears him, hits the kill switch. Dustin kicks out. Place went crazy for that kick out. And then Christian grabbed him, hit his second one for the pin. The promo setting this up was awesome. The match was awesome. If you want to be a wrestler, you should go back and watch that promo segment and this match. Yes. And just watch it over and over. Yes. And then, uh, then shut There's a way up. to go outside of the ring and not do it too much. There's a way to use plunder and not kill yourself with it. Everybody's got different reasons to be in wrestling, and they're going to take different paths to get to wherever they're going to be. But there is a happy medium in not doing too much and being able to save your body somewhat because... It's one of the things that keeps Dustin Rhodes in the mix for as long as he has been. Christian Cage as well, too. Yes, we talk about all the big bumps that he took in TLCs, but it's not like he was a super reckless professional wrestler. And you see the fruits of that still paying off today and the fact that those guys are able to go out there and put on a match that, as you mentioned, the people were going nuts for. Best match of the night to me by far. Swerve promo. He put over Hangman saying that, Hangman ran through everybody. Perhaps he could even beat God himself, but he could not beat Swerve. He's beaten him twice. Nothing more to prove. He wants the title. We had a Jericho promo. Talked about how the Don Callis family had ripped the titles from their hands, and Sammy was injured, couldn't be there this week. Vowed to destroy Takeshita. And then Matt Seidel apparently is just right off camera, and he just pops right in, and he goes, Hey! That doesn't sound like you, Chris Jericho. You know what you need? You need to get back in the ring and fight someone who has beaten you before, like me. And Jericho says, well, maybe you're right. Let's do it this coming Friday on Rampage. Can we at least Zero booze for Chris Jericho here on this show. No, but can we have some ruckus or something like that with somebody walking up as to the reasons why Orange Cassidy has kind of already made fun of this whole thing by, by slowly just ambling up and then saying, hey, you got the title shot or whatever it is. He's done that a couple of times, but it is kind of a ridiculous trope here in the fact that why, again, nobody can see anything except for right here when it comes to these interviews. Kind of odd. Commander and Penta versus Orange Cassidy and Trent. <laughs> this guy goes, we sure those cheers weren't piped in? Come on, stop. <laughs> Commander and Penta versus Orange and Trent. This was a... Uh, do you know that Ricola is a sponsor of Dynamite? Why don't they do that commercial during the uh, uh, the Claudio matches? His finish is a Ricola bomb. Good question. He should be, he should be sponsored. He used to be sponsored by Headblade. That's true. I don't know if he still is. Way back in the day, too. He was an originator of that, getting his. getting his. Good job, Claudio. Tons of near falls. Orange hit the beach break on Penta and actually sat right in his head. And then he hit the punch on Commander, and Trent crunched him and got the pin. And then the Undisputed Era came out, or the Undisputed Kingdom. Keep calling them that. And uh, Roddy, this is a new one, by the way. You know, a lot of these AEW pay-per-views, it's like we wait and we wait and we wait and we wait and we wait. And then like two weeks before the pay-per-view, they start announcing matches. It's like, why can't we have announced some of these a little earlier? Well, now, you know, it's going to be Roderick Strong and Orange Cassidy at the pay-per-view in six weeks. Oh, now I'm ticked off, actually. We also got Sting and Darby versus the Bucks Ugh. in six weeks. Well, that's fine because those guys can cut promos. I like Roderick Strong. I think he's a fabulous professional wrestler. I think he's got a great life story. I'm qualifying all of these things because I like Roderick Strong, but he's been played up as a geek for months, and he is not exactly king of the promo. And to me, they dangled those two out there for way too long last night. And I think that's something going forward, don't do so much of that. There's a reason that Cole was the voice and is the voice of that team. Hangman Page is out there with a promo, and he vowed to face whoever won the 
main event. So it looks like it's going to be Joe and Swerve and Hangman in a three-way, is my thought. I like Magnum AP. And I, I think like we'll that. know that uh, here pretty soon. We had the Mark Briscoe segment where he came out, the Briscoe family, Papa Briscoe, the whole crew's there in the front row. Mark says, one year ago, my brother, my partner passed away in a car accident. They say generations come, generations go. My nieces were in the car with him. They told my oldest niece she would never walk again. However, and down the ramp walks his oldest niece, both nieces, and they are so happy, and Mark is thanking God and the fans, and the Briscoes are crying, and they showed the same Jay Briscoe video package that they played a year ago. Nothing in 2024 will top this segment. Nothing. It was awesome. We had a sit-down with the Young Bucks, Nicholas and Matthew Jackson, <laughs> executive vice president. And then Nick, who is the low-key funniest guy in all of AW, he just calmly says, it's time to take this job more serious. And then he doesn't say anything the rest of the thing. And Matt does his promo. And at the beginning, I was like, okay, listen, this is my job. Like, I've heard it all. But Renee goes, we've seen temper tantrums and public meltdowns. We want to know if the rumors are true. But she doesn't say what they are. <laughs> like, okay, what are we talking about? And then Matt says, no, the rumors are not true. I said, okay, is somebody going to tell me what rumors we're talking about here? But nobody did. So once they got that out of the way, so the storyline is... They're EVPs. This place has lost its way. We have too many of these uh, these old guys, these old former guys coming in, and it's taking the vibe away, and they need to get rid of it. When they first started here, the perception was the company was different. But now, it's not different. And they like Sting. He's one of the greatest of all time. But he represents that dying breed. And they need to get rid of all of them. They're starting with Sting, out with the old, in with the new, is their catchphrase. And uh, that will be the build to this match. And then presumably that's the build to the Young Bucks versus uh, Adam Copeland and Christian down the road as well. The gimmick is going to drive people nuts. Nuts. And you better I hope so. Can't wait to watch it. The hope is it drives people nuts. It's going to galvanize their base and the people that like them absolutely for sure. And you hope it's enough where people want to tune in to watch them be jerks, watch them be losers, see what stupid thing they're going to do. But hope that that happens as opposed to people just kind of maybe rolling their eyes because there's going to be some that do that too, a percentage that do that and go, okay, whatever, bro. Let's see. They're mustaches, by the way. There are a tell. What did I tell you? Incredible, mustaches. incredible. Can you imagine the meeting they're going to have dressed like that with Tony Storm at some point down the line? You know it's going to happen. She's going to try to talk to Jack Warner, won't be able to get to him, not be able to find Tony, and they're going to run across each other. It's going to be amazing. And we had the Mogul Embassy versus Bang Bang Gang for the Ring of Honor Tag Titles. Not a lot of heat early, but it sure picked up there at the end. Nana got involved. He hit the ring with the belt. He was going to use it behind the referee's back. Anthony Bowens made the save. Jay hit the Blade Runner. They won the titles. And then acclaimed on the ramp said, we really need to get together. We'd be great as a unit. Go after those 12-man titles. <laughs> Everyone's like, maybe they can unify the belts. Yeah, they should unify them into the 12-man titles. Don't so do that. So there's six belts for all six, literal six-person teams. Like, they used to call it the six-man titles, but really it was only three men. This should be the actual six-man titles. There are six belts. You have to have a team of six people to challenge for these belts. Yep. CMLL is right now scheduling 74 tournaments for this. Excellent. Adam Cole promo. Wardlow's going to win the title, he says. Deanna Parazzo and Anna Jay with uh, Tony Storm on commentary. This was mostly just about Tony on commentary, cutting her all the time. And uh, her shtick. I don't know what you're doing under that table with your feet, but do it harder. Deanna got the double arm bar. And then uh, afterwards, Renee goes to interview her. And she says, you know, I used to be best friends with Tony, but 
I uh, can see that you've changed, but I have as well. And you might have been friends with Diana Parazzo, but you've never met the Virtuosa. And she says, I'm the best technical wrestler. And Tony is a gas, and she says, technically speaking, you're an artificially tan hag. And her past... My past is none of your concern. It is not insulting. I should get in the ring, she says, and suck you right in the box. Everyone (laughs) lost it that way. (laughs) Then they had a shoe-throwing contest. And Taz goes, don't you throw that shoe at me. I thought he was going to put Tony in the Taz mission right there at the desk. We had private party in top flight. So, uh, man, this was an example, you know. You get private party and you get top flight. And you put them in with great workers, and they have great matches. You put them in with each other, and it's okay. And it was like, they're all grappling. They're putting on holds, and the crowd's like, okay. That's a good arm bar there on the mat, Mark Quinn. But then they did some high spots at the end. Quinn did his stuff, but he's a little slower than he used to be, which is odd because he tore his pec. I guess maybe when you run, like, you need your... Anyway... Because he's probably a little more out of shape and winded, especially if he's covering it up with a shirt. Quinn uh, grabbed the ropes, got the pin. Get cold, man. And then Samoa Joe and Hook for the title, commercial free. Man, this Hook. Hook's one of those guys like Moxley where what you see is what you get. Like, he doesn't care about anything. He's just whatever. He walks down to the ring. He's in a main event for the world title. It's like someone needs to wake him up. But, man, when that bell rang, he woke up, and he goes after Joe, and he's brawling, and they do the uh, they do the Brock Lesnar match with this poor guy. Samoa Joe is just pummeling this guy, and uh, he kills him with a urinage under the table, which was the scariest damn thing I think I ever saw in my life. And uh, they tease that Hook won't get back in, but he does, and he fires up, and he makes his big comeback, and the place is going nuts for this comeback. And Joe grabs him, and he cuts him off. He hits that muscle buster, and Hook kicks out at one. Now Booble here is just screaming at his TV. (laughs) He's going to win that money he didn't bet. But he goes for the red rum. Joe blocks it, puts him in the choke. They raise the arm once. They raise the arm twice. And they raise it a third time, and it drops. And uh, after the match, Joe's leaving. Hooks wakes up. He starts screaming at Joe to come back. Joe comes back, gets another muscle buster. He goes to leave again. Hook won't die. Get back in the ring and fight. But out comes Hangman. Joe bails. Now Joe sees Swerve in the crowd. They're all coming after him. And then Hangman helps Hook up, and he endorses him as the show goes off the air. Loved this main event. Loved it. Thought it was a great thing for Joe, great thing for Hook. I don't want anyone to beat Joe. Like, I like Swerving All and Hangman, but this Joe is awesome. Let him have a run for a while, which I think they might do because I have a feeling that Hangman and Swerve are going to cost each other the title in that three way, but we'll see. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you? WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute... As noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer Archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. 
thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, tens of thousands of hours of audio, all for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.